I remember the first time we were getting ready to go and my sister and I are all dressed up, we're all bundled up the best a single father can do at the time. And we're sitting waiting for the social worker to bring us to our next parents and we're just, you know, our legs barely hanging over, you know, just sort of waving back and forth and we're waiting to see in a sense who our next family uh, would be. I remember one particular home uh, running through the forest saying, you know, doesn't anybody love me? Doesn't anybody care? And I, I really thought that love was only for the special people because at that point I, I didn't feel special. I still remember just feeling like we are all alone and, uh, and no one's really there. I was lost and I had to be found again. I have this one image of my mom and it's one of the very few uh, that I have of her. Uh, she's, she's pulling my sister and I on a sled and so I must be about two and a half, three. And that's probably the only good image I have of my mom. She took off and uh, um, left my dad behind. He was a simple guy, dutiful. And so when my mom left, um, he had two little kids, didn't know what to do with them. I think we were in total about of seven different foster homes. Sometimes we were in a home for a month, sometimes it was three months, and sometimes more. Uh, one, um, my, my sister and I were separated. A couple homes we were um, abused in different ways, and uh, you know, physically and, and emotionally. The pain uh, was very raw. The emotions were always there. The, the, re the feelings of rejection, the, the feelings that um, you didn't matter, you didn't count. I, I remember there was one particular uh, Christmas I was told that my mom was coming, and you know, I was thrilled. It's probably been about four years since I'd seen my mom. I was probably about six or seven at the time, and I was excited, you know, was, and when you think of it for a moment, I'm, I'm excited that I get to see my mom, you know? All I can pull from my tickle trunk is this image of my mom pulling my sleigh, this petite woman, and you know, and of course as a kid, the most beautiful woman in the world, and I thought, wow, I mean, I wonder what a mom looks like. All of a sudden I hear, I, I hear this, Derek, 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 and I come running to the door. Well, this lady who stood before me didn't look anything like my mom. I couldn't make any correlation at all. And then she said, this is your mom. And I think that would be one point in my life where if you could hear a heartbreak, that would be it. It was like all the images I had. I got to see my mom, but this wasn't the mom I had. And that was a hard time because I had a, a, now a stepfather who didn't really like boys. Um, and unfortunately, you know, in some ways, uh, uh, like girls too much. And so uh, we, we had that hardship taking place in our own family. And so my mom became a, a real alcoholic, had gained a lot of weight, and so we moved. And so it was a hard time. It was a hard time. I took a rope, I hung it in my room, and I was tired of being laughed at. I, I just couldn't deal with the rejection anymore. I couldn't deal with the beatings. I have, I have two scars here where my friends took my face and decorated the back of a bus with it. I wanted to give up, and I hung the rope up thinking that was the solution. And I remember staring at it. It was things like forever, and I looked at it, and I got closer and closer and closer, and then I broke down and really cried for hours. And I remember, I can't even do this. And I stopped and I looked at the ceiling and I said, God, you're my last chance. God spoke into my heart and he said, you know, Derek, I'm not your last chance. I'm your only chance. When you discover love, uh, when you discover hope, uh, your life totally changes. And uh, for me, all of a sudden, it was like this immediate calling. And I just remember this feeling that I want to make a difference in someone's life because there's something about feeling like that you have no, no place to go, no direction. And then when you find it, it channels you. There's something about walking in hope and knowing that no matter how bad things get, there's someone who's got your back. The call was strong to work with kids just like me. And so I got involved with a Youth for Christ at the time in Montreal. I was engaged when I was 17. At 19, we were married and we dedicated our summers always to, uh, to ministries. We're always involved in ministry. If I could be brave enough to let people know that 
my story may link to their story and that becomes a link to tell about his story. And, and I've realized that we all given stories and we all have tough times, but I've begun living everlasting life. Uh, I, I have a relationship with Jesus Christ and sometimes it's tough and sometimes I cannot control the relationships around me. I can really only dedicate myself and my purpose is Christ. All you can do is really trust. And sometimes like a little kid just holding on to the father's hand saying, you know what, I'm just going to hold your hand. Uh, for me, uh, discovering love again is I realize God is love. And when you know what love is, it's easy to rebuild.